what's up? I'm Troubleshoot, or welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how you can set up a brand new server for Paper Minecraft 1.20. This is a brand new release, so please do expect bugs. So of course, if you're watching this in the future, this video will still apply, but for now, it's in the early testing phase. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Paper MC website, where you can download 1.19.4 currently, but of course, in the future, this will be 1.20. As you can see currently, as 1.20 released literally a day or two ago, we have this option down here to toggle experimental builds for 1.20. If you see this, you'll need to click it. Otherwise, in the future, you'll get the option to just download paper straight away. All you need to do then is simply click the download here and wait for it to finish. Now you'll be able to head across to your downloads where you'll find the paper jar file. This is all that we need to get our server up and running. I'll make a new folder on my desktop here called paper 1.20 and I'll move the jar file into it. Then I'll open it up and we can start setting up our server. First of all, we need to actually make a file to launch this jar file. So I'll right click new and text document. Then I'll name it start.bat and we'll remove .text afterwards to change its file format. Make sure you click yes. And now it should be a Windows bat file. If you don't see .txt or you don't get that pop-up, simply make sure you can see file extensions like .jar. To do so, head across to view on Windows 11, followed by show and make sure that file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, you'll find a view tab on the ribbon bar and it should be somewhere across on the right. Now that you have everything set up, we can open the start.bat file with something like notepad. A simple right click edit should do this. Now we'll need to type in some commands here to launch up our paper server. In the description down below, you'll find this bit of text linked on my website. All you need to do is copy and paste it in. But if you want to type it out manually, it's echo off on the last line here, pause. And on the middle line, Java space hyphen XMX 2G space hyphen jar space followed by the name of the jar file here. In my case, paper one 20 hyphen three dot jar, but yours of course will be different. So make sure to type in the correct name here. That includes the people who copied it from our website, then space followed by no GY and save this file. Now, if you were to run it, your server will start up with two gigabytes of RAM. The more RAM that you have, the more functional and fast the server should be. So I would recommend giving it a healthy amount, maybe around four or six gigs of RAM. Though do keep in mind, you can't give the server more RAM than you have available. If you open your task manager with control shift and escape, then head across to the performance tab, followed by memory, you'll see your total amount of RAM, as well as how much is available. Now, of course, you'll have maybe 16, maybe six will be used, you have another 10 lying around in free space, while you could give the server up to 10 using XMX for maximum 10 G. If you were to open up a browser or something like that, you may run out of RAM. So always leave a bit of extra RAM for any other programs you may launch, especially Minecraft itself, if you're going to be playing on the same computer that you're hosting the server on. In my case, I have a huge amount of RAM, so I'll give it maybe eight gigabytes of RAM. So I have an XMX 8G as such. You can also enter 8000M, for example, which is the same as 8G. Eight gigabytes is 8000 megabytes. I'll save it and close this file. And now we can double click it to launch up the paper server and it'll start setting things up. If you don't see text like this and instead you see an error, not this error here, something about Java, then you need to make sure that you have Java installed. You'll find a link in the description down below to download and install Java. In my case, at the very end, you see something about a EULA. All we need to do is close this file by pressing any key and open the brand new EULA.txt with notepad. Inside of here, we'll simply change false to true, save this file and close it. That first error is completely normal and meant to happen. Now we have a plugins folder here where we can place our paper plugins. And of course, we can launch up the actual server using start.bat. Now our server should be up and running just as soon as this generates world files, etc. And we should be able to join it. So in my case, I'll open up Minecraft 1.20 and we'll prepare to join the server. Then I'll go ahead and launch up maybe Optifine for example, if you'd like guides on installing Fabric, Forge, and even setting up servers for those, for 1.20, you'll find those in the description down below. Now that Minecraft's started up, let's go ahead and join our server. So I'll click multiplayer here, and all we need to do is click add server, then in the server address, we'll be entering 127.0.0.1, otherwise known as localhost. This is your own computer. When you add it, you'll see that a server is now available. You can open it up, and there we go. You can see we're now connected to our own server. Awesome. 
Now, of course, something you may want to do is run the command in a terminal here, op space your username, in my case, techno. This gives us operator, which means we can now run commands like slash game mode creative, for example, to change our game mode to creative, etc. But of course, the server is a little bit lonely with just us on it. How do we get someone sitting next to us, for example, using the same router and network as us to connect? Well, assuming you aren't using a third-party firewall, such as an antivirus with a firewall, all you need to do is allow port 25565 through the Windows firewall. This step may work for you if you're using a third-party firewall, if it chooses to listen to the Windows firewall rules. So, all we need to do is allow it through. In this case, in the description down below, I've made some commands to make life a lot easier for you. Instead of digging through the Windows firewall yourself, there's four commands you can go ahead and copy by heading to the article link in the description down below. Simply scroll down until you see this section here with these four commands. Essentially, we're allowing port 25565 as Minecraft server through our firewall both in and out. Copy these commands here. Open up PowerShell as administrator. Otherwise, if you have a terminal, that works as well. If you opened up a terminal, make sure it says PowerShell at the very top. Otherwise, click the drop down and choose PowerShell here. Then right click to paste and paste anyway to run all four of these commands. Just hit enter a few times to make sure that everything ran properly. Now port 25565 should be allowed through our Windows firewall and people on our local network should be able to connect. So I'll disconnect and add a new server. What is our local IP address? All you need to do is open up terminal or PowerShell once more and run the command IP config one word, then hit enter. This will tell us all of the information about all of our network connections. All we're gonna do is look for the way that we're connected to the internet. In my case, ethernet. You'll see IPv4 address followed by a number. In my case, 192.168.150. This is your local IP and what people on the same network can use to connect to our server. So I'll paste it in my server address here and add it. And as you can see, people on our network should be able to connect just like that. But of course, this is only people on our same network using the same router as us. How do we get people over the internet, for example, to connect and play on our server? Well, all we need to do is allow them through our router's firewall and redirect traffic on port 25565 through to our computer. To do that, we need to port forward. But before you get a bit scared, port forwarding is actually pretty easy as long as you know your router's password. That's really the only difficult part about this. As there are thousands of routers, instead, in the description down below, I've made an example video showing you how to go ahead and port forward. It really is simple, and I've done my best to make it a simple process explained well with a video. Once you've allowed port 25565 through your router, through the use of port forwarding, and pointed to your computer's local IP that we found earlier, people outside of your network should be able to connect to you using your public IP address. It's pretty simple. Assuming you have multiple routers in between your computer and the internet, you'll need to port forward from the internet to the next router to the next, all the way to your computer. At this point, you're all playing on a server, but when you're done, how do you save and close your server? Well, head across to the console and type in save hyphen all to save the world and everything in it, then type in stop to close the server completely. This is much better than just closing the window outright, as this makes sure everything is saved properly, otherwise you could suffer data loss and of course corruption. When it's closed, you can press any key to continue and now your server should be offline. Perfect. Just a quick note, this is completely free for you to do and the reason is, is that you're using your own hardware. When your own hardware and computer isn't running the server, the server won't exist. It's as simple as that. So anyways, thank you all for watching. That's how to set up your own Paper 1.20 server. It's super simple. And of course, if you're interested in setting up Spigot, Craft Bucket, etc., you'll find links to those in the description down below. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.